Hero Quest. Deep inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. This is Hero Quest, the fantasy adventure game where winning means mastering the arts of combat. I'll use my broadsword. And magic. Fire of wrath. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna do one thing that I always dream about doing, and it's painting a full set of HeroQuest models. Now, not today, but within a few days, I'm gonna have my whole set completely painted. And this is all the miniatures and all the furniture inside of it. Why HeroQuest? Well, since I came to Malaysia, I didn't find that many people to play games with. But I remembered, and one of the posts of a friend of mine during this past Christmas, reminded me that Heroes is a great introductory game for anybody. So I have a few friends here already, great friends, but they never played any games. They never played any Warhammer or any role-playing games or anything like that. And I felt that I needed to introduce them somehow to this great hobby. Now Heroes is great because it's not very difficult. It just uses a few dice, a few rules, all characters are ready, and it's very easy to pick up on. My friends are loving it, and I think that the best way to repay them for getting into my geekiness is painting the miniatures so the game feels even more awesome. So what we're gonna do today is paint models in a way that resembles that of the box. Now let me show you something. Back at the end of the 80s and 90s, Mike McVeigh, a very famous painter, was in Games Workshop and he painted all the models for the box and as you can see, this is a very retro style fireworks. It's a Chinese New Year soon, so. Oh my gosh. Oh my fun. What we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to paint these miniatures so it resembles the old school style of Games Workshop. It's gonna be awesome. Washers are very, very easy to use. And today I'm going to do something new. I'm going to make the video for noobs and more advanced students. First of all, I'm going to give you the list of paints and inks that you're going to need for this. Secondly, I'm going to paint the miniatures up to a level where I feel that is really easy for everybody to pick on. And after that, what we're going to do is just add some extra steps to the painting so the miniatures look even better. So, let's just start. Let's do this. We're gonna start by cleaning up the miniatures uh, from all residue that they might have after being cast. What I have done is file them, clean them with a cutter, and after doing this, I'm gonna wash them with soap and water. As you can see, now they are dry and they need to be primed. So I'm gonna use a white spray primer and after doing that, we're gonna start painting. So we're gonna start painting the metals. I'm gonna use bolt gun metal and paint all the weapons in all the different miniatures and also the parts like armor and etc. Now 
After that, I'm gonna use Gehenna's gold. The Femir armor and weapons are made of this golden material, probably bronze. But the other miniatures in their weapons also have some golden parts. So I'm gonna paint those and wrists, um, armor, or whatever they have. So now we're gonna start putting yellow on all the miniatures that need that. Mommies need a nice coat of Cassandra yellow. And after I painted all the goblins and orcs and female with yellow, I'm gonna give them a coat of Weight Watchers green. Actually, two. Skeletons are a little, a little bit different, so I'm gonna use a light yellow. In this case, it's Lamenter's yellow. I'm gonna coat all the bones with it. So it's time for the sepia wash. This is the most, um, the biggest layer of uh, wash. It goes onto all the metals, the leather, clothing, weapons, shafts, etc. On the orcs, I'm gonna paint all their tunics with this. Skeletons also are gonna need a nice coat on all the bones over the yellow. So don't be worried about staining too much because they actually need a coat all over the place. Weapons on the goblins. Basically everything that is metal, wood, Leather is going to be painted this way. So, yep. The femur, the metals on the femur also are going to need this. Also the tail. The tail somehow is not green, it's brown in the picture from Mike McVeigh, so I'm going to do that. Nails, teeth, belts, anything is going to be brown is going to be painted with this first. The mummy, the mummy is gonna get another coat of sepia onto the wraps around its body. So we're gonna do that in order to improve the tonalities on that. Once the orc's tunics have dried, I'm gonna give them a second coat of sepia in order to enrich the color and make it more dark. Notice the difference between two washes and only one wash. Fagan orange is going to be used on the tunics of the goblins because they are red and we're going to start with this orange in order to create a base from which to build the reddish color that Mike McVeigh chose for the goblins on Hero Quest. The zombies also have red tunics or weight and clothing so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to paint them orange in order to build from their onwards with red. Blood leather is the next color. We're gonna use this one for those tunics from the goblins. Also we're gonna use it for the eyes on the goblins, orcs and femir. And as I said we're gonna use it on the zombies clothes, also its eyes, as well as the mommy's eyes. Okay, so we've been, we've been washing a little bit and probably we have stained some area that we don't want to be stained. So what I'm doing is fixing that with white. Tracking half is a great color that creates a gray layer and we're gonna use this on the belt and shoes of the goblins. And also, we're gonna use this on the belt of the orcs and other parts of the miniatures. Since the bases are gonna be grayish, we're gonna use this color as well on them. The skin on the mummies is grayish in color too, so we're gonna use Drakenhof Nightshade as well.
As I said before, we're going to paint the belts of the orcs. And those handles of weapons that have some kind of wrapping, we're going to paint them with this color as well. Now this is a mistake I should have painted before the pants of the zombies with Gilliman Blue because the next step is going to involve Drakenhof Nightshade. So please do this before opening your pot of Drakenhof Nightshade. Agrax. Agrax is going to be the base layer for the zombies skin. We're going to paint it richly with this color. Also, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade to color all the weapons of these miniatures and some of the leather parts or brown parts that we want to enrich in and make darker. The armor of the orcs is one example of how we are enriching the metals. In the skeletons, we're going to choose some zones and with a very light wash, we're going to darken those small crevices between the ribs, bones, etc. Gold is going to benefit from the same treatment, just to make it a little bit darker and richer. And also we're going to paint the tail and the belts on the femur. We're going to retouch teeth and some of the crevices on the femur because there is a lot of flesh and we want it to look better. Alright, so this is what we should have done before, but since we forgot to paint the paint blue, we're gonna do it now. We start painting the hair on the zombies with Drakenhof Nightshade, and then we're going to proceed to the paint area so we can darken that blue and make it look a little bit older, not this bright. Zombies look darker on HeroQuest than in other settings probably. Now with known oil, we're gonna darken the shoes and the belts on the goblins, and we're gonna do likewise on the belts of the orcs and the wrappings in on those weapons. Skeletons are gonna get a little bit of this on the eye sockets, the nose and the teeth. We're also going to put a little bit in order to darken some areas from the zombies. Beneath the cheeks, arms, also the pants are going to get some of the wash. It's just to make the areas more definite between them. So now this is the basic level. If you felt confident so far and you think you can do better, go ahead. Let's do some more. But this is as good as, good as you can get with a few steps. These are perfectly playable and they will look great on your table. But if you want to do more, let's do the extra mile now. Alright, so this is an artistic ink uh, because here I haven't been able to, brought, uh, to bring my own washes from Citadel, the old ones, but they work perfectly fine. I'm not thinning it too much. I want to darken the shoes on the orcs and also I'm drawing lines for the mouth to make it stand a little bit more against the other the other parts of flesh. In the tunic, I'm also darkening small crevices, so and also at the bottom, so it looks as if the tunic is not going all over the place; it's just like hanging loose. Goblin has received the same treatment, just darkening the areas around the mouth, so there is some definition, and I'm also darkening the wood shaft on the site for the skeletons and between the different bones of the hands, ribs, etc. This has to be more careful, it's not just go ahead and wash. 
Same treatment for the shaft of the axe on the or the meat cleaver on the zombie, as we can see. It's just detailing and making it darker so it stands more against the other surfaces. Now here we go with the highlights. The skeletons need some highlights to make the bones pop up. So I'm gonna do that with Shapti bone. Carefully gonna just find the raised areas. Takes a little bit of practice, but it's not very difficult. And highlight them so they look more three-dimensional than they look now. And this is what we will like to have at the end of the process. We're gonna do the same with the zombie. The flesh is going to be highlighted, so we have a more three-dimensional feel to it. Very carefully on the face, since it's a focal point, we have to pick the nose, the eyebrows, the cheeks, the chin, and all those parts in order to make sure that the face look, looks perfect. All the muscles and all those areas receive the same treatment, knuckles, forearm, etc. The idea is to make a more three-dimensional miniature. On the femur, we are working on the small uh, bone uh, plates or small spikes that he has or it has <laughs> on its tail. Also, we're picking the different teeth. We did this with the orc and we're doing it with the femur. Small lines on the leather uh, belts and such, so we get a little bit more three-dimensionality. And we're gonna do the same treatment onto the wooden shaft of the axe in order to get some wood grain. The mummy receives the same treatment with shafty bone to get a little bit more three-dimensionality in all the flesh areas. Basically working on the chin, the eyebrows, the nose, the little details on the fingers as well, kneecap, all those small places need a little bit more to pop up. This is very easy to do, but it takes a little bit of patience as well. On to the orc. The tunic is nice, but it looks a little bit flat in my opinion. So I'm gonna highlight it very carefully, choosing the right places, the ridges on the clothing, and also I'm gonna work on the teeth. As final highlights go, white is the most highlight of the highlights. So I'm gonna use these only on the skeletons, only just to touch up the teeth, nothing else. I want these bones to look yellowish as Mike McVeigh did on his own uh, implementation of the paint for the miniatures on Hero Quest. Very carefully pick each one of those tooth. Now this zombie is gonna get a third layer of highlights, whereas the first one was the washes, second one was Ushapti, and now with white we're gonna achieve a more pale consistency to its flesh. Also I'm retouching the belts and some of the areas so they get that distinctive worn out um, feel to clothes that have been overused, and this guy is certainly overused. The mummy needs this the same treatment. Every single wrap is gonna be highlighted. So it takes a little bit of patience, but it pays off on this miniature. Carefully, I'm gonna highlight all of those wrappings so it looks like a proper mummy out of the tomb with nice linen clothing from 2000 or 4000 years ago. On the orc's lower lip, I'm drawing small lines to create an effect that might look like there is some, um, how to say this, texture to the lips. I'm also highlighting the belts with a small line, and on the flesh, I'm drawing 
lines on the elbows, the biceps, the knuckles, things like that, to create more three-dimensionality to the flesh. Even though it's green, white, if we are careful, will look okay or even well onto it. The gems on those wrist bands are picked up with white and also the ones on the sword because we're gonna work on that later. One thing that I don't remember showing on the video is that I go onto each eye and I paint a small line. So, a small line, a small dot with white to get like a pupil since they are, are red. The treatment with white is repeated on all the green skins, femur, goblins, all get the same treatment, knuckles, cheekbones, and such. There we see the small dots that I'm painting onto the eyes. Also some highlights onto the belt and the clothing, so we can get a little bit more three-dimensionality and a more worn-out look. As you can see in this um, small image, you can see that I've used a little bit of blood letter on the lower lip of the goblin. I forgot to mention that before. But yeah, do that by all means. Put a little bit of blood letter after you do the wash with yellow. Or even the green one. Either way, it works. The femur has also gems onto the belly plate and those small plates to the sides of its head. I'm pretty sure they have a name, but the pauldrons maybe, I don't know, I don't remember. But I do the same white treatment, picking up all the ridges on its head and also the teeth, the nails, every single place that I think that it will benefit from a little bit more highlight in order to show more muscularity, three-dimensionality, more character for the miniature. Don't forget to also pick up the small um, stops on the tail, leaving a little bit of the bone color beneath. And now we're gonna do one of my favorite things to do on these miniatures and it's to paint these small highlights onto the metal which has been pre-worked with the bolt gun and the two washes of um, sepia and agrax. So I, what I do is I pick up the ridges and then with a little bit of patience and carefulness I paint these small dots and lines as if they were scratches onto the rusted metal showing a fresh layer of unspoiled metal. The trick here is not to overdo it and do less as you go to the side of the blade that is less probable to be involved in combat. I also pick up the belt buckles and other things on the other miniatures but once again I'm doing the same thing over here in this mid cleaver very carefully dot 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 is not very difficult it yet takes patience and a little bit of eye in order to know where to put those dots 
everybody's going to benefit from this technique, but the Fumir because its weapons are made of a different metal. So, but this is applicable to any miniatures, not only these ones, any miniatures that uh, you know that their armor will be a little bit rusty and such. So def definitely try something as simple as this if you want to, to make the weapons look old, battered and worn out. Alright, so it's time to highlight the gold and we just pure Gehenna's gold. I go and pick all those details that are with the golden color and probably by now after the two washes don't have any shine whatsoever. So this is gonna help restore the color and richness of such a nice uh, metallic hue. The Femir is the one that is covered in the most amount the biggest amount of, of this metal so I am doing the same treatment but on more surface than the other miniatures so the Femir has gems as well as the orcs and we start with blood litter we also go to the eyes of all these creatures and paint again on the white spot that we did before so it doesn't look that white we put in the corner, in the lower corner, a little bit of red. Mommy's eyes, zombie's eyes. Skeleton doesn't have any eyes, so. And with the help of this red ink that I have, the artistic red wash, or reddish brown, I paint with a fine detail brush, small lines all over the flesh of the zombie. So it looks like there is some bleeding or veins or whatever. After the red is dry, we go back to the Femir and paint a little bit of cardboard crimson in the lower corners of the gems. I put this horizontally so it dries properly. And just a small highlight on the gems with white scar here and there so they look proper. I usually don't do gems like this, this is a very simple technique, but I don't have the colors that I needed. So they are finished now, let's see some pictures and comparisons. This is the original Goblin, and this is what I've done with my own Hero Quest miniatures. As you can see the bases have been finished, I'll show how to do this in next video, but enjoy!